The purpose of this tutorial is to learn how to select a row in a data list or grid, take that row to another screen where we can modify it, and finally see the change we've just made. Here we'll start by using the same data master we used in previous tutorials. Create a new data grid with two columns only. Add an on click event on the product's name. Choose the set value event. Put the value in the variable product and clicking the calculated value, specify what the value will be by dragging and dropping the data grid's row to the square. This event implies that the value of the variable will be the product that the user clicks on. Now you need to create another screen that will present all the data selected so that the user can edit them. In this second screen, draw a form that will feature all the attributes of the selected product. Because we have a single variable including all the attributes, the challenge here is to assign the right attribute to the right text field. Click somewhere on one of the text fields and create a new on page load action. Select the set value event, choose the text field where you want to put the value, and open the calculated window to define the value itself. The purpose here is to select a specific attribute inside our variable. To do so, we first need to select the function SELECT in the Collection tab. Now, in the first square, we need to say from where we're going to select the value. So, we'll drag and drop the variable PRODUCTS. In the second square, we have to choose the attribute we want to show. So, we'll go to the Data Master tab and click on the Data Master PRODUCTS to open its tree. Now we just have to select the attribute we want. Draw a confirmation button to send all the information to the data master. On this button, add an on click action. Choose the data master action event and here select the modify option. In the first square, drag the variable product and drag each text field to a square corresponding to the data master attributes. Here, the variable is used to know what instance of what product has to be modified. Finally, link the form button to the next screen that will show all the products along with the new modified product. On this final screen, we'll draw a new data grid. Now, when simulating, you'll see how each time you modify a product, the data list is updated.